I'm here to talk to you about how to do high volume prepping the brass on 223s. A lot of you guys probably already know prepping brass can be a pain in the butt. It takes a long time, you know, it depends upon how you want to go about it. I know that I run into problem because I do like 6,000 rounds at a time and I like to get as much done with the least amount of time. So what I've done is, the first thing I do is I buy my brass from a range that I can get my brass cheap for about a nickel a piece or so, sometimes four cents a piece. Sort out the brass, you take a magnet, you get all the steel out of it. Uh, that's a simple way of, of, of doing it. And uh, you got to be careful with boxer primers and Bernan primers. You got to make sure you don't have those mixed in. So you got to kind of have a feel on what the range has to offer. So you, that's where you're going to have some problems. If you uh, pick up brass, you can't be inspecting it when you're trying to get a lot of it. It takes a long time to inspect it. So you got to kind of take the word of the people on the range, you know, what they're shooting, keep your eyes open. So you get the right stuff. Anyways, what I decided to do is I, I set up a 650 here. I got a lot of add-ons. I got uh, first thing I did is I bought a couple units. I got a light system here that I bought that lights up everything underneath. You can find the stuff. I'll let you guys do your own searching on that. I'm not going to give you any uh, sights right now at this time. Uh, the light lights up really nice so you can see the primer, or not the primer, but you can see the powder dump into the shell. After you pull a handle up, you can see that there's powder in it. So it's nice to have a light that's bright. I have a actual bottle system here that instead of primers flying down the tube and then bouncing and falling on the floor, they actually go into a cup and this will hold about 80 primers. Not that you want to fill that bottle because if you do, that means you got a lot of problems with your press and you're, you're skipping steps because you got problems. And then uh, that's how you get live primers going into this bottle. The other thing I'm invested in is a, a bigger catcher for the primers so that when the primers get knocked out, you don't have to constantly be filling the little chute that slides in here. When you, The problem I had with that is when I had that, I'd be clipping along doing lots of rounds and what would happen is it would fill up and I wasn't paying attention and then I'd fill up the hopper and then it would jam up the shell plate and then you can't do nothing. Then now you got to take it all apart, clean it out, you got all kinds of headaches. So this is a really nice system to have and I just go to uh, YouTube, or not YouTube, but the, the website, I think it's called uh, the Dylan 650 Add-ons. I think you type that in and then you'll get the website to find this particular unit. The other thing that uh, I bought, and I'll show you, I'm going to pull this press handle down. And uh, I'm going to show you this unit here. This is a what they call Swedget. Or, or swage it, however you want to say the name. This is another add-on that you can buy for the 650. This will swage your your brass primer so that you can get the, uh, you know, when you collect military brass, you guys all know when you get to this point that you got to swage the, the, the primer pockets. Alright, so your new primers will fit. Alright, if you're doing volume, you know, the little hand jobber that Dylan sells, you know, that takes forever. You got to sit there and pull, put them in and one at a time and if you're, you know, like me, I'm doing 6,000 rounds right now. I want to get these knocked out. So basically, it, it's a really nice unit. It takes a little bit to get it set up because if you don't set it up just right, Dylan says you can actually crack this whole unit out by using this. They don't like to see it use this. Uh, I would say ignore that because I've done a lot of it and I haven't had any problem with it. The main thing is to get it set up perfectly and when you buy it, this is about $99 to buy this, you know, plus your shipping and that. And uh, it's, it's pretty expensive for a little piece of metal, but it's well worth it. 
So that works real well. The other point, what I did was I, I set up my tool head. Basically, you got the first die is your, uh, you got to knock the pin out, which is you can use a universal prime, uh, knockout primer die if you want. I'm using a neck sizer die that's got a knockout pin on it because that's what I had laying around. I used to do you know rifle shooting, not so much ARs, so all my rounds would fit my gun when I shot them, so I didn't have to full size it, so I just went with the neck sizer. So that's why I got this in there. That's all I've got. I don't have a universal one, so that's what I'm stuck using. So I got that, and then basically you're going to run it through the step where you got that first, then the next step is going to be where you, you actually are going to pull down your round and then you're going to push forward like you're priming it. Okay, when you do that, what that does is it actually swages the, the hole on the bottom, which makes it so you can put the new primer in. Simple as pie. You don't have to do any much tear down at all. You know, you're just doing a couple steps you can have this set up in no time but the main thing is you gotta have an empty tool head now when you set this all up and you keep this tool head separate from everything else so it's ready all the time okay now we'll get to the point now on the, this big baby here a lot of you guys probably don't have this and this is kind of an expensive unit it's a motorized trimmer and the right way to use it of course you use the vacuum system on it so basically they, they give you all this with it. You get you don't get the vacuum, but you get the the little blue deal here that the vacuum hooks up to. And then as you're shaving the brass, the vacuum sucks that off the top so it don't fall on your shelf plate and get everything jammed up. And that works really well. So basically, uh, I do this get for prepping brass. And then uh, the problem that you're going to find is that the first time is when you get all done, the lube that you put, you have to lube these, all right? So you're going to be stuck with lube on your case after you're all done loading them to put in your gun. Because I'll tell you why. If you take these down and you put them in a tumbler, what's going to happen is... All the granulars from the uh, corn cob uh, media, you're going to get little, little uh, tiny granulars that's going to stick into the primer hole. And uh, it's going to clog it up so you don't get the right flash when the primer goes off, which could cause some problems. It'd, be, it'd probably be dangerous. So what I do is I just leave the lube on. They're a little bit sticky, you know, but... I don't know how you would go about cleaning these. You know, some people say use uh, a different type of media that uh, it's, it's, I forget. It's it's called uh, I can't think of the name of it, but it's a little different media. It's finer and it'll fall through the hole. Well, I don't think that's going to work either. It's still going to have some problems with clogging that up. So. I don't think there's anything wrong with leaving the lube on. I think you're fine with that. If, if you, any of you guys think that that's a problem, just leave a comment uh, down below on the bottom, and uh, I'll look at that and see what you got to say about that. So, anyways, uh, when you get all this stuff run, another thing I want to talk about is when you get you know when you get this all done and everything is a little bit sticky. And now you're going to start loading. Now you put your other tool head on. It's set up. It's ready to go. Okay? Everything's set. Put your pins in. You're ready to go. What I've got extra that is on the market now is called the Mr. Bullet Feeder, which is up here. And uh, this is all set up to go. Uh, it takes a little while to get it all adjusted so that the bullets come down the chute and they drop onto the case. And the only difference is now, and you guys are probably going to ask, you know, why why not keep your primer in and then knock it out when you load? Well, there's a problem with that. The 
the tool head doesn't have enough spaces for what you need for dies. When you get a Mr. Bullet Feeder, what happens is that you have to have an M die for expansion, to expand the case. Because normally when you load 223s, you don't even, you don't put no bell on them. You know, you, you would normally just hand feed your, your bullet tip and walk it up and it'd go in no problem. But in this case, the Mr. Bullet Feeder has to drop that bullet on top and it's got to stay so it don't fall off the case. So, seeing it and all that, once you got that all set up, it, it, it works really beautiful. You do all you do is you just keep pulling the handle and you watch everything and make sure you can even see your powder. You know you're going to skip a die because you got what you start out with. You got your M die up here that expands the case. Then you're going to have your powder dumping charge. Well, actually not your powder dumping charge. You're going to actually prime your case. You're going to put a primer in. And the next stage would be your powder dump that would put the powder into the shell. Okay, so now it goes to the next next stage and what that's going to do is going to drop the bullet in and that takes up another die space. Okay, so you don't have any room, any room to put a powder checker in there. Now you could skip that and move it over one and you could use a powder checker but then you're forced to buy a seeding and crimping die as one unit. Well, I don't like that because I'm kind of precision when it comes to seeding the bullet tip. I like to have it right on the money. And I use a Redding seeding die. The Redding seeding die does a very, very accurate job on seeding. It's right on the money. So, in all said, that takes up all your space because you have your bullet drop, then you got your seating die, and then at the end you have to have a taper crimp die because the taper crimp die, when you shoot from an AR-15, it has to have a crimp on it because if you didn't have the crimp on it, what would happen is when the bullets go into the gun, they slam in. If they don't have a crimp on there, it's going to push the bullet into the shell when it slams into the chamber. You don't want that, so you have to have a crimp on there. But you don't want to over crimp it. And the way to tell that is if you over crimp it, you use a hammer device, which you all know about, that you knock the bullet out. Okay? When you knock the bullet out, if you see any indentations on the tip on the bullet, and it puts a mark on it. That means your crimp is way too tight. You don't want to see that. You want to see a nice clean shaft on that bullet tip when you knock it out. That's how you tell. But you also want to get it as tight as you can without making a mark. And another way of telling is that if you got to slam your hammer down more than two, <coughs> two times, you're going to know that it's way too loose. You gotta whack it probably a good, good six times with the hammer, nice and hard, and then that's a good way of telling that you're plenty tight for that. But don't leave marks on your bullet tip because if you do, it's way too tight. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start this up, and I'm gonna it's gonna be very noisy, and uh, I'll show you what what you gotta do. One thing you gotta do is you gotta give this trimmer a little time to trim. You can't just go you know, bam, 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 and, you know, hurry up and go. You got you to gotta let it sit there a little bit and let it spin so it cuts the top off. So I'm going to start this stuff all up, and it's going to be a little loud, so I'm going to stop talking because I'm a jabber box. So I'm going to start this up right now, and I'll just need a vacuum. forward so that you actually put that wage into that hole. So you're opening up that hole so you put new frame in it. You push the knot real hard. And you hear that knot and that's what it comes out. I want a little too fast on that one. 
the idea on how this is working out. Now, how would you like to do this with the little hand driver that you got to pull and you got to stick the shell in? It'd take you a month to do a 6,000 batch. You know, so this, ain't, this is pretty slick. I like the way it works. But I don't like the fact that Dylan says that I'm going to crack the 650 uh, casting on here by using the swage it. Alright, it's called swage it. So go to the Go to your website, type in Swage It, and you'll get the information on it. And then this is all called Dylan 650 Add-ons. Just put that in on a search, and you'll come up with the company that you can buy these components for. But I'm going to tell you something. When I bought this, it came wrong. There's a lot of there's two different types of 650s out there. There's the very first one they made that was off the line. I don't know what year it was. But it had the spring system on for your powder. And I've got the one where you don't have the wraparound spring. So I got a newer unit. So what you do is you take a picture of this area right here when you order this, this part here. The guy likes you to do that. That's what I had to do. Otherwise, you take a chance of getting the wrong one. They sell one that's all one unit. You get this here in the bottle, and it all bolts up underneath as one unit. And it's nice, but it's got to be able to fit the press. So take a picture of it before you order it, or even when you order it. Take a picture and send it. That way you know you get the right one. And uh, I can't remember exactly how much it was. It wasn't that much. I'm going to say it's probably like 60 bucks, maybe, maybe not even that. It might have been $49. But check it out. Just go online. And, guys, I hope I helped you out on doing this for production. I know there's a lot of people out there that say, why would you do all this, you know? I'm not loading that many. Well, there's, there's some people out there that shoot a lot of 223s, you know, and I happen to be one of them. I like to go out rapid fire. At targets that are, you know, 20 yards. I like to practice on keeping my groups real close. You know, so you got to have money, too. I mean, it's it's expensive sport. That's why we try to load as cheap as we can. So I go around and I shop. So I hope this helps you guys out. And uh, I'm going to sign off now. And uh, I appreciate it if you guys would subscribe and tell me if you liked the video. You're probably going to tell me I talk too much, but I hope I got the point across. So, thanks. We'll see you next time.